You can't resist us, Mr. Powers. You can't resist us, Mr. Powers. Au contraire, baby. I think you can't resist me. Before the class, Sunbot Women in the Construction of Difference in f Film and Media, I had experience with gender inequality. After looking at the gender inequality that plays into movies, and especially this added twist with robots and fenbots, truly broadened my horizons. Before going into the class, I assumed it would be mostly about women and how they are portrayed in movies, but by going one step further and analyzing the relationship between robots and this technological advancement, that have been globally flooding our world allows us to critically be engaged participants when receiving the messages from these different films. Much like Smith Gregg said in the article, it's not just a movie, I found that prevalent throughout the entire course because every aspect was meant for a purpose and was carefully decided. Nothing was left to chance and this was a constant theme throughout our course and the films. Throughout the course, I felt the films Blade Runner, Austin Powers, Her, and Wally stayed very connected with the main themes of our course. Blade Runner was an excellent first film that encompassed several themes we discussed throughout the course. For example, it was a great depiction of Wendy Chun's article Race and Technology, or how we do things to race the way the film constantly represents technology and the association with the Asian culture in sci-fi films today. We are currently referring to technology with hints to the Asian race and asserting these false stereotypes. Another aspect to Blade Runner was the utilization of women roles, how they are replicants, meaning robots symbolizing women are not worthy enough to be represented as humans in this film. The women jobs are also stereotypical and very sexualized jobs. This sends out false representations of women in order to appeal to the audience. Another film I thought encompassed our class themes was Austin Powers. The way the, the way the fembots are portrayed in the comedy of Austin Powers is not that much different to how fembots in Blade Runner are perceived. Staying true to the bond between masculine and men, allowing the men to always come out on top, being powerful, exhilarant strength, and not being weakened by the fembots or women. Donna Haraway also explains that new technologies affect the social relationships of both sexuality and reproduction. Another fascination I found was the idea of the inaugurus movement, which is often portrayed in old movies, especially those starring Marilyn Monroe, the iconic sex symbol. Audiences were drawn to the representation she embodied, the illustration of the ideal woman. She was the perfect damsel in distress. In her film, Some Like It Hot, which we watched a clip in class, Marilyn Monroe encompassed the perfect woman. Through camera lighting, her body being curvy, blonde, blue eyes, she had a very sexy voice. All these characteristics symbolized to the ideal woman in society. Viewers fell in love, especially the males that which fonded over her. This relates to the film Her, and how Scarlett Johansson has been embodied the sex symbol and utilizes her very attractive sexy voice to appeal to the male gaze. Just in her voice alone, she is satisfying the male audience. Although in other films and in her appearance, you can see the iconic sex symbol come to life. In conclusion, I did not expect to critically learn to analyze films in the way we have learned to. I am paying attention to the obsession with technology that has been influencing our society and clearly myself. The role it plays within cinematography and now how to utilize the methods we've learned to, dis to decode and critically view films in the gender-oriented form. I'm taking these messages I want out of the films and understanding the relation to culture and social stereotypes that people normally would like to follow and using my own voice to create my own unique creative ideas.